Hi, and welcome back to Stage Makeup Theater 146. I've already put really good techniques to how to achieve scales with fishnets into Canvas, so check out those links. This is great for fish, amphibians, snakes, any of those cold-blooded animals you might want to create. I'm going to start with my hair back and a clean face. I'm going to use some toner, and then I'll follow with a little primer. You can also use moisturizer if you don't have a primer. I want to have the face. I will do a nice blended foundation color of my animal. On the right side of my face, I will do a harder edge, an outline that defines where my makeup ends instead of the blended. On the left side, I'll also block out an eyebrow so you can see the difference if you choose to block your eyebrows or not. For my image, I chose a husky and I traced over the major color areas of his face and his major facial features. And then I took that tracing, added it against my own schematic and saw where the eye-nose-mouth relationship would line up with my face to best represent this animal. Remember, this is a stylization, so you get to choose and make lots of decisions now. So we have a basic idea how we're going to do this layout, but the most important part of stylization is trying out the makeup first, because things are going to shift when you take an unrealistic thing and apply it to a human face. So I'm going to use an eyeliner, and for my husky I'm using the brown side of my Krylon eyeliner. If you have a black one and you're doing something like a panda that might work, or a, even better, if you have a white eyeliner, that's great when you have paler colors for your animals and it lays it out really nice and neat. So I'm looking at my schematic, which I'm keeping right next to me as a reference along with all those images. You notice I had lots of different images of different huskies, so I can pick and choose with features best line up with mine, and I'm laying them out on my face. And I'm going pretty quickly. My pencil's nice and warm. The edge isn't super sharp. I like the way this Krylon pencil moves because it's a little softer. And if you make a mistake, you just stop and correct it. You have a wedge next to you, and because you have that primer or a moisturizer base on, it's gonna move really easy. You're also gonna keep checking side to side if they laid out pretty symmetrically, if your animal is symmetric, and then you're pretty much to where you can choose a couple things. So I'm thinking about how much my lip do I wanna use or not use. I'm looking at the proportion of the eye I initially drew on my schematic, which now feels very large, so I'll correct that and go back and forth. Because this isn't my final application. I'm just testing out the layout. And then the next step, you're going to go and start laying in your colors. I like to start with my lightest color first, so I'm using the Krylon Double Zero, which is very, very pale, like the fur of that husky, and I'm charging up a sponge and really laying it in all over my face. Well, actually, I'm just going to do the left side of my face so we can talk about these techniques before we move on to the right side of it. And on this side, remember, I'm going to blend that edge. So I'm pretty pale to start with, so I'm going to take that edge and instead of making a hard line at the bottom where my jawline is, I'm just going to blend it down and away. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to actually start blocking out my eyebrow on the right side so you can see the difference of a blocked eyebrow versus not. And you can choose if you want to do that with the product. After I've laid in with my sponge, I always go back in with a nice flat brush so you can really charge up that brush and lay in those colors because that's going to let you get right up to that edge line, smooth out any of those lines, and when I'm working into my brow that I haven't blocked, I can really go and paint each one of those hairs to make it go away as best I can. Oh, I'm going back, I'm checking my areas. I'm laying things in, I'm adding a second layer of glue to my other brow and letting it dry, and then I'll move on to the right side of my face. On this side, I'm going to start with a medium brown color, and I'm charging up a sponge and I'm laying it in, and I'm going to work it back into my hairline so it just disappears back there. And I'm going to use my foundation brush to lay it in and comb it all the way back into my hairline and then down and around so it fades out by my ear. For the smaller areas, I'll use a flat brush and I'll go back in and work it. And I actually have two flat brushes now going, one with the light color and one with the brown color. So I can work back and forth and check areas to see what I missed or get those corners. 
Now I have to lay in a couple layers of the glue for my brow and I'm using my knife to smooth it out and then I'll show a different technique on the right side. I'll show you how to give yourself a very defined edge so you really know where that makeup application ends. Remember the left side we continued it and blended it into our hairline and just blended the bottom colors into our own foundation color. On this side I'll show you a harder edge and also what it looks like if you decide to do blocked brows. So I forgot to color correct and then powder these down, so give me a sec. And I'll finish laying in that really pale foundation color, getting my edges with my nice flat brush. Remember to charge that brush up and keep it nice and flat to really get a good crisp edge. And then I will go back in and lay in the brown color. So on the right side, I'm actually going to use a dark brown so you can see the difference of laying in your darkest color as the base and then working up with a medium and lighter color tone to create your hair versus the left side which is that medium brown where I'll then work my darker and lightest colors in. I started doing the fur but then I realized I actually thought it felt a little flat so I really wanted to show what how to create a little texture and a good way to do that really quickly is to use your stipple sponge. I grab my stipple sponge and on the dark side I will model a little light brown into that and on the left side, which I'm doing now, I'll model a little bit of that dark brown there. Then I'll go back and charge up my nice flat brush, give it a nice flat edge, and lay in some of those toning colors. So I'm going to lay in the dark brown eye, it has a nice big eye to the husky, and then a couple of those little lines they have to define his face. And what's useful about those lines, it's going to look a little more like him, but it also helps use the features that we have, right? That orbital socket where we come out from our mouth and up to the cheek, and we can see where our face is going to bend and move by smiling and manipulating our face and matching it up to the face of our animal. I'm also going to lay in this nice dark nose. And you really want to make sure you're getting the whole thing covered, both the nostrils and underneath. So you're coming from that septum up and underneath your nose. And then think about what it looks like above the dog's mouth or whatever your animal is. So he has those little dots where his whiskers are. You can lay in individual dots if you want. Um, but I just stippled them in pretty quickly by using my stipple sponge and shaping the direction of that. And now I'm going to think about the lip. So again, time for decision making. I'm going to use both my upper and lower lip and use the full lip. Uh, maybe actually on this right side, I'll see what it looks like to block out part of that lip so I bring it in some. And I'll make sure I'm using my liner, my eyeliner, to line my lips with that. I'm going to use that eyeliner to reline my nose to keep those edges nice and sharp. And I'll also keep my makeup in place a little bit. Now I'll start thinking about the fur. And fur is really about direction. So I have a flat brush and I'm thinking about where that fur is and what direction it's going on the dog in different places. Remember, on my right side, is darker so I'm gonna mix a mid-tone and I'm actually mixing the darkest brown with that 00 super light color to create its own mid-tone and I'm going right along the line of the eyeliner to create those lines and then those middle areas where you have lots of color blocks and I'm laying in those lightest colors and I'm pulling a little bit of the white in to create some fur line and I'm going to make sure all those hard edges are suddenly softer and you can see they're just smudging out ever so slightly. Now I'm going to clean my makeup just with a paper towel and on the medium side, the lighter brown side, I'm taking that 00 color and pulling my white into the brown to see what the difference looks like. The white into the brown versus a mid-tone to smudge that line with brush uh, hair strokes of the whole way. I'm also going to do the edges because remember his hair would lay over the edge of his eye ever so slightly. You can see me using my wrist for my palette for some quick color. I'm checking the lines where they would lay in. I'm looking side to side and going back and forth and I'm adding darker lines, lighter lines, and mid-tone lines wherever I think they're needed. 
I have a couple different flat brush going. I have a white one or a light colored one and a dark one. That way I can go back and forth between the brushes really quickly. So next I'm going to line my eye. I start with the crease and then I use the brush to work that darkest color down. And then I'm going to set that very dark color so it doesn't smudge using shadow. And for this, I'm gonna try a different color on each eye so I can see what they look like. Because remember, we're doing a layout and we're testing out different techniques and different colors to see what we like. So I'm gonna use brown on my right eye and I'm using black on my left eye. And I'm using an eyeshadow brush because it's a little fluffier, right, to lay it in. And I'm also looking at how I'm resolving my cheeks. I ended up blending the right side more than I initially intended to show you, but I just didn't like that hard edge. I'm going to also pull out some white cream highlight because I would like a little more contrast in the white areas. And if I chose to do this 00 color in a slightly darker tone, I'd get even more contrast. I think I might do that if I were to do the project again. Again, I am thinking about which way my brush is going. I'm using what I can see in my brow to continue those lines upward, but I'm also thinking about the fact that the hairs above my eye are going up and away, while the hair below or the muzzle area and below are going to go down. So the whole time you're thinking about which direction your fur is going to go and that's going to inform you how to use your brush. And I'm going to clean up a couple edges while I have this white here, maybe with my lip, add a couple hairs under the chin, and just work my way around and see what I like, see what I might want to touch up. What do I want to pull into the rest of the makeup? So remember, use your facial features. I'm going to use my cheekbones and I'm going to pull that brown up to the bottom of that cheekbone to really use what I have. We have a very dark nose on this creature. Many animals have very dark noses and they're shiny, so I'm gonna also show a little highlight here with some of my 00 color, and then I'm gonna clean up under that nose. You don't really wanna overwork anything because you can always come back. So I'm gonna take some time to powder, knock it into that brush, knock it off the brush, and then think about the areas. I always start with my lightest colors first, work my way around the makeup, and because this fur has such direction, I'm going to also apply my powder in the direction of the fur. And then I'll move on to the brown. So white first, then your brown, or whatever your lightest color is. I'm also going to want to blot my lip color, so first, and then check for powder again. I'm looking around to see if I like everything I have done. And of course, sharpen your eyeliner pencil as you need to. There's a lot of hair, a lot of lines being used, so it definitely needed a little sharpening. And I'm gonna take that pencil, cause that dark brown's even darker and it's black on the other side, and go back in and work around. I'm trying to do my eyeliner into the camera for you. It's a little hard, so give me a moment. Use that mirror. And of course, if you need more, texture you can always come back and stipple. So I've loaded up a little bit of color and I'm stippling into the various areas to add a little more texture because I really like the way that felt. So now I'm going to look at the makeup and think about what else do I want to do. I'm going to go back in and pick up a couple of details that I lost when I powdered. So I'm going to look at my lightest color, my mid-tone color, and my darkest color. Also think about using my eyeliner and then work my way all the way around the face and see which areas I want to adjust. And then once you adjust, of course you're going to have to powder again. You always want to make sure you're setting that makeup so it doesn't run. Especially when you're using a lot of makeup like an animal project or when we do the portraits next week. They take a lot of makeup and a lot of color so you don't want those colors blending and running into each other. So I'm just taking my eyeliner pencil really quick with the dark brown and going all the way around my face to get a lot of last minute touches. And then don't forget to photograph. Get a front view, a side view, any other angles you want, or maybe a couple of details. And then check the photos as you go to make sure your lighting's where you want it and you captured what you want. Because now you have photos to see what choices to keep. So you made a lot of decisions. We tried a lot of things out. Every animal is going to be a little different. Now you can look left to right and see what we like and adjust your schematic and have fun 
because next week you'll turn this in for your final project. Thanks everyone!